All right, y'all, I want to make this one short and sweet. Forgive me for that last one. It was kind of dry. I had a headache, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> so we've considered string musical instruments. Now we're going to consider instruments that use columns of air to produce standing waves. Can anybody think of any instruments that are like this? All right, organs, flutes, clarinets, stuff like that. So recall pulse reflection at medium changes for strings. Consider a single wave pulse sent along the tightrope fixed on the wall shown. So we have a rope attached to fixed end to a wall just like this. We're going to send a pulse down and it's going to be reflected back. But the amplitude is going to be opposite. Equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. The wavelength stays the same. We'll watch that one more time. No. No. For information, waves reflected from a point at which the medium cannot move are reflected with a phase shift of... Forget that for you information. <clears throat> now consider a single wave pulse sent along type row fricks free to move on the pipe as shown. So this one, the wave, this little end down here, can move up and down. And if you remember how change medium stuff works, fixed end, free end, it's going to come down, and how's it going to come back? If you said the exact same way, you'd be correct. It's going to come down, and it's going to come back. It's going to be identical, just moving in opposite directions. So waves reflected from a point at which the medium can move are reflected without a phase shift. So. Just take this of out of this first part. Typo. The ends we call the nodes. <clears throat> For the fixed end, it's a node. For the free end is an anti-node because it's going to go up to the highest point. It's going to go up to the maximum amplitude. But down there on the fixed end, it's not going to move, and that point's never going to change. So from last power point, you should remember that that's a node. Now, air columns act the same way. Columns of air, this one we call a closed end pipe because this end is closed. And this one we call open because both ends are open. So down here on the closed end pipe, we have a node at the closed end. As I said, that's a closed pipe. But down here on the open ended pipe is an anti node. Open pipe. So anywhere there's an open end, we're going to have anti-nodes. So on the closed pipe, the open end is an anti-node. And both ends of this open pipe are anti-nodes. So we're going to shoot some air in here. And here's what the wave is going to look like. Now the length of this pipe equals one quarter of the wavelength. This is only a quarter of the wavelength. Disregard this bottom half right now. This is only one quarter of a wavelength. So you find the length of a pipe if we know the wavelength and how many nodes, anti-nodes are in it. <coughs> and that would be the first frequency, hence the one at the bottom. Now this one will be the second fundamental frequency, second wavelength. So the length of this pipe will be three quarters of that wavelength. Here we have another one. Looks like a bunch of Jesus fish. Let's see, ha ha ha. The length of this one is five fourths times the wavelength of the third frequency. So you can do a pattern here too, just like we did with strings. <clears throat> and this will be the pattern. So for whatever n we're looking for, you just put that n into this equation, and you can find the length of the pipe. Now, working with the open pipe, here's the first one. And what's the length of this one going to be? What do you think? It's just one half, because this right here is a half of a wavelength. And what do you think the next one's going to be? We have one full wavelength, so L. 2 over 2 times the wavelength. So whatever the wavelength is here, that's the same length as the pipe for the second. 
And for the third, we have one wavelength and another half of a wavelength. So we get three halves of that wavelength. So for open pipes, the pattern is L equals N times lambda sub N over 2. For equal lengths, which pipe is capable of the lowest frequency, opened or closed? Lowest frequency. Write your answer down, and we'll go over it in class. I'll be checking that whenever I check your note packet. So just as we found the harmonics for strings, we can now find them for air columns using the relationship, the same speed equation that we had for the last chapter two. Velocity equals the frequency times lambda. We re rearrange this to solve for frequency, and we get frequency sub n, so whatever frequency we're looking for, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on, equals the velocity of the wave divided by the wavelength. So for a closed pipe, we have this equation. And for an open pipe, we have this. We solve this for lambda. We get lambda sub n equals 4L divided by 2n minus 1. And on for the open pipe, we just get lambda n equals 2L over n. Now we can find frequency by doing some rearranging. And we get the frequency equals 2n minus 1 times v divided by 4L. And for the open pipe, we just get nv over 2L. So in general, we have this equation. We can re place all this 2n minus 1 with this m subscript, or this just this m variable. Or m could be 1, 3, 5, any of the odd numbers. There's no even number of frequencies for closed pipes. But there are even number of frequencies. You can use every number from any whole number from 1 to infinity with an open pipe. So in this one, the first frequency equals v over 4L. So we can just use m. If we know what the first frequency is, the fundamental frequency, we could find any other one by using this equation. And same goes for the open pipe. If we know the first frequency, we could find any other ones using this equation. So these are the closed pipe naturals, and these are the open pipe naturals. So natural frequencies for closed pipes and open pipes. And here are just some pretty pictures to show you what each of these guys look like. Here's the ones for the string, the fundamental frequency, second harmonic, third, and so on. And for your air columns, <clears throat> here's your open pipes over here, your closed pipes over here. And you can see that the odd number one, or sorry, the even number ones do not exist for the closed pipe. And that's it. So just a quick little problem. We have a closed organ pipe with a length of 2.40 meters. To find the frequency of this note is what we want to do. So the first thing we need to do, remember that the length of the pipe equals lambda must be 1 over 4. So we rearrange this guy. We get lambda equals 4L. So, plugging this stuff in, 4 times 2.40 meters, we get our lambda, our wavelength for this guy to be 9.60 meters. And we're trying to find the frequency, so using the V equals lambda F equation, solve for frequency. Frequency equals velocity over lambda. So, unless I tell you otherwise, this is the speed of sound. 343 meters per second divided by our lambda, 9.60 meters. So you get 
35.7 hertz. <clears throat> so this is the frequency that we hear coming out of this, the first, first frequency. Now, when we introduce a second pipe playing at the same time, a 1.40 hertz beat note is heard. <coughs> now, I didn't explain in any PowerPoints how to do beats because it's pretty simple and I want to say for this problem. So the formula for the beats, so the frequency of the beat equals the absolute value frequency A minus frequency B. So for this case, the beat we're going to hear, frequency, is 35.7 hertz minus this guy, 1.40 hertz. So the beat frequency that we're going to hear is 334.3 hertz. Okay, so now that we have that frequency, we need to find our new lambda. Our new lambda. So lambda using our velocity equals lambda f equation, solving for lambda, velocity over frequency. Velocity is still the same, 343 meters per second, divided by our new frequency, which is 34.3 hertz. And this gives us a wavelength of 10.0 meters. Slightly larger than the first one. So now we have to find the length of the second pipe. So using that first equation that we had up here, lambda 1 over 4. So that gives us 10.0 meters divided by 4, which will equal 2.50 meters. So this is the length of the second pipe, but the question asks how much longer is the second pipe. So quick little arithmetic, 2.50 meters minus 2.40 meters. And that gives us a whopping larger 0 0.10 meters. If you ever look at a pipe organ, like you can see the differences in the sizes of the pipes. So next time you're in church or watching a program that has church on it, I'm sure you'll see a pipe organ. And now you know why each one's longer than the others. <laughs>